So bareback sex refers to sexual intercourse without condoms. And among men, it is means the purposeful exchange of semen and means the implicit or explicit intention to contract as, uh, sexually trans uh, transmitted diseases, including HIV and AIDS. So a big part of bareback culture I'm studying is the erotization of the risk to contract HIV. It's almost like a badge of honor for gay men. And here pause, the term referring to being HIV positive becomes an identity. So there's the uh, there's a set of vocabulary associated with uh, bareback culture. I listed a few here like pause, faggot, uh, pussy, condom, breeding, raw, gifting, and chaser refers to like the gifting and chasing of HIV, and the like the mixing of DNA is a term used to describe the infection of STDs. So. It is a little bit reappropriating derogatory terms used against queer people, but I'm having a question mark here because it is also very much a fantasy of the self-imposed inferiority of the slut, the feminized faggot, in front of the real man. So it's like a very uh, heteronormative uh, patriarchal dichotomy. There's a lot of layer there. Um, at the same time, because it is also taking ownership of that victimhood uh, under uh, the very same structure of heteronormativity and patriarchy. There are um, a lot of digital, uh, so I'm also looking at the digital facilitation of discussing and seeking bareback sex. So uh, there are geosocial applications and online forums that has become a huge part of the contemporary bareback culture. And uh, down there is Breeding Zone. This is the biggest online forum uh, that dedicated to the bareback community. And here I have Grunder. It is like a popular app used by men to date and have sex encounters with other men. And down there it is uh, like a specific dating site designed for barebackers only called uh, Bareback Real-Time Sex. These digital platforms also facilitate uh, cruising in traditional ways, uh, like in bars, uh, bath houses, sex clubs, and adult bookstores. In fact, there's a big nostalgia associated with those uh, like non-digital physical facilities because they represented the like the golden era of bareback sex when like HIV pandemic is not a thing yet. Um, so, however, what these digital platforms brings to bareback culture is an enhancement and reimagination of affect. So basically, these platforms visualize an anonymous network of people connected via sexual desire. So this effect is like the carnal carnality, it's like the visual visuals of the flesh, uh, proximity, synchronicity, and fungibility, meaning like, you know, these units of flesh are changeable, uh, it's not attached to a certain identity. Um, So there is this, um, in this digital eroticism, the virtuality bleeds into reality of digital communication, which becomes like a turn on. And there's like a sense of managed randomness attached to digital eroticism. And actually the website I just mentioned, Breeding Zone, uh, it is launching its own hookup uh, platform called Calm Down, uh, Calm Down Calm down network. Okay. So zooming in at the data I collected from these digital platforms, there is a bona fide storytelling, meaning that the community members are narrating their life and even the very traumatic experience in their life as a sexual fantasy. So there's a lot of erotization of the anonymous communal bond built through STDs and in those stories, sexual deviance becomes a symbol of autonomy and resistance. 
So this connection between like sexual fantasy, bareback sex, and uh, communal storytelling uh, is also manifested in real porn, produ uh, porn production, like those by the brand Treasure Island Media. What I'm also noticing is a redrawing of ethical boundaries around sexual health. So in the stories, there's a lot of very solid, important information besides like, you know, the point of fact storytelling, there's a lot of information about sexual health. And it's almost like being transparent of the supposedly deviant sexual desires clears way for information distribution. So it's not no longer that just your typical medical advices about how you stay away from STDs. It's a lot of information about like, you know, how to manage the risk, like when you do get exposed to one STD, what do you do? So this is the framework I'm trying to use to make sense of all of this data is what I'm calling affective infrastructure. infrastructure. So I'm borrowing from Lauren Berland here to think about uh, the question of politics in terms of the reinvention of infrastructures for managing the unevenness, ambivalence, violence, and ordinary contingency of contemporary existence. What I want to achieve through this work is alluding to a bigger framework of what I'm calling queer uh, as queer healing. So basically it's to think about healing as a communal, as a multivalent, as an infrastructural uh, reconciliation with one's imperfections, either socially defined or not. And lastly, I just want to show one example from the data. So basically, this person is talking about, you know, since last time they posted uh, their desire to have to get uh, into bareback culture. So they have spent, uh, so I'm just reading here, I've spent my time thinking about everything I have decided uh, that I want to become a condom. I feel totally certain it is like my life is beginning. The next time I have lots of free time is on like this person is having these plans. So Lastly, this person says, I suppose I just want to tell you guys because this is a place where I feel I can talk about this stuff and not be condemned. This is a really big thing for me and I feel grateful to have this place. So this is like kind of an example of the data I'm looking at. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Thank you everyone for this short presentation. How am I going to, okay.